everybody it's thursday the 15th of december only nine shopping days to christmas which is a which is a terrifying thought um but christmas is upon us it's a wonderful time uh we do even have some snow it absolutely freezing out there um i've been out with the dogs twice i uh, just got in a few hours ago and it's absolutely freezing good evening my name is nick thompson they call me the gut doctor on this show and we are here to discuss all things herbs all things holistic all things um how to 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 maintain the very best of gut health because when the gut is right the brain is right when the gut is right the immune system is right and when the gut is right everything kind of falls into place so that's what we're into that's what we're love that's what we love to study uh with this show you're very very welcome tonight we are going to talk about puppies and the first few weeks okay so rosie is standing by as ever and we are going to progress over there i hope you're all very well lots of people coming through just now it's great to see uh not an awful lot else to do on such a cold night so but we're glad to have you here well, it's really great to so i'm gonna put i'm gonna put me down there and i'm going to let's have a look i go down there those are both showing there and i'm gonna go over to here and hopefully you can hear me and i'll just wait for rosie to is she there yeah she should be that's great so she, you can hear me everything's well and you're looking at a picture and <laughs> one of the things about this this uh talking about puppies is you, it's a great excuse to uh show lots of pu cute pictures of puppies because there's nothing more cute than a puppy i've been having lots of conversations with people uh for the last oh well the last three years truth be known you know since we've been with the lock, lockdowns and what have you lots of people have been getting puppies um but in in the run-up to christmas um, there's a lot of people who are very committed you know there used to be that thing puppies not just for christmas but i've spoken to some very dedicated owners who are really wanting to do things properly so i thought what better time to show you lots of cute pictures and go through some of the conversations that I've been having with people um, over over the last few weeks and months. So um, this is us, and we are going to be discussing things under the uh, under the gut doctor. Really want to thank very much our friends at Vermex. These are the guys who allow uh, me to take time out of my busy day to prepare pretty pictures and to be able to uh, think how best to to get these concepts across to you so very many thanks to our friends at vermex um they're great supporters of uh, the health of dogs and puppies and all our domestic uh, animals so many thanks to them and thanks to Rosie and very happy Christmas to Rosie <laughs> I'm looking down here because she's she's on the phone saying yeah everything's fine I can hear you so that's great thank you Rosie and um, this is wonderful so here we are yeah <laughs> I spoke to somebody even this morning and she uh, said that uh they are getting a puppy i said oh when are you getting puppies like, tomorrow morning <laughs> i could hear i could hear the joy in her voice but uh so so what happens you go along to the breeder and you get the puppy and you take the puppy home and it's all very joyous and then you get the puppy home and then at some point it strikes you oh crumbs now <laughs> what do we do okay so it's very joyous and very terrifying uh realization it's that that um that sudden uh reality uh it hits you firmly between the eyes and you're 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 overjoyed 
and slightly terrified at the same time, especially if it's your first puppy. And there's lots and lots of uh, first puppy owners, first time puppy owners out there. And you're welcome to a really wonderful club, uh, guys. So th the big three conversations I've been having with people involve food, because the first thing you think crumbs, we've got to feed the thing you know uh the second thing is people start talking to you about oh puppies have worms and so that conversation is going to drift into your psyche and then in those kind of conversations as well people are going to say oh what about the vaccines what are you going to do about the vaccines and that may you may think oh it's dead easy we'll just go along to the vets and off we go or you may think hang on a second, I've got quite strong opinions about vaccines. I want to think about this. I'd like to actually discuss this with somebody so that I can get pros and cons both ways. We're going to give you some signposts uh, today to allow you to look at these three things. And I think that if you get if you get these three things right, that's mm, that's most of the whole thing. OK, there's obviously 100 other things that we could be looking at. But. If you get these right, I think you're in good, in a, a great shape to to start things off. So let's take those uh, one at a time. So food options. You probably got some food in because you knew you were getting a puppy. The puppies probably come with some food of some sort, and it's going to be one of these four. The four major options we have for feeding the puppy will be the most common probably amongst people watching this show, possibly not the most common, but, but uh, for the new puppy owner coming from the average breeder, they will probably come with a kibble. A kibble is the brown, little brown biscuits. A wet food is either comes in a tin or comes in a pouch or comes in a, you know, you know, a punnet, uh, something like that. This is the wet, these are the wet options. Fresh is real food, that has been lightly cooked, okay? That's the technical term for it. And it's just to differentiate it from raw food where they, there hasn't been any heating process. Uh, most raw food uh, comes in two, 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 in two forms. It's either just uh, meat, bone, and organ, which has been minced and then frozen and sent to you, or it is a more complete where they've put uh, vegetables and maybe some some berries and some seaweed and some fish oil and bits and pieces in order to make it a more uh, a complete offering for the puppy okay so these these are the options table wet food fresh food and raw food my choice is raw food i would i would start a puppy from day one on raw food um, we can talk about how you transition onto raw food or fresh food or wet or kibble to be honest um, but uh, we'll talk about transitions in one second but let's just assume you're going raw this would equal equally apply to the others but I like talking about raw so I'm going to talk about raw so puppy comes comes along puppy's being fed probably either wet food or kibbled food at the breeder. There are many breeders now at the moment, actually, who do feed raw food, and it's wonderful. And if you can find these people, then, then do, uh, do, uh, do, do support them. They don't need support because they're getting loads of people coming to, to see them. But they're wonderful because they will be able to guide you initially on your raw food journey. Um, so uh, I think raw is a great idea. Um, but how do you do it? How do you move puppy from the kibble, the food that can, the, the breeder has given you onto raw food? And uh, there are three main uh, options there. Let's get my wife's uh, shopping list off the screen there. Um, so the three main options would be an immediate cold turkey transition or the other one is a four day transition, or there's an extended method transition. Let's go through these options uh, uh, ourselves. My photo might just be over that last one, but there's a calendar there, meaning it takes several days. Okay, so you can, you can even see it, okay? So the immediate is as it sounds. What you do is you just, you get a, a, a fairly gentle, bland, light meat, the turkeys, the chickens, the even, even a bit of lamb, uh, of this world and you just put it down small amount for the puppy puppy eats it great wonderful you can feed a little bit more an hour or two later 
and you 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 transition immediately this is what we did with bluebell this is what we did with mouse bluebell came she was on james well beloved before she came to us that's a that's a kibble a biscuit and she went poof, straight on to raw food we've actually got some video of her within 20 minutes of coming through the door she came up from bournemouth uh, and she just dived into the bowl and she thought all her birthday birthdays had come at once and she's been on raw ever since with mouse the breeder because of conversations about bluebell and the raw food the the, the, the breeder bless her shelly has uh moved her dogs onto raw food and so mouse bluebell's half sister uh she came on raw food and so it was a really easy transition uh for mouse to go onto onto the raw food and they just did a, a straight transition okay um uh, and i think most puppies would do that um if the if the breeder says that the puppy is particularly delicate stomach then you might want to you know uh you might want to um go for maybe a four-day option the four-day option is pretty much as it sounds you're just introducing over four days so on the first day you'll introduce uh mainly the the food from the breeder mainly uh either the wet or the kibble and you will introduce a quarter of the bowl eat at each meal as raw and so it'll be a quarter on the first day it'll be half on the second day it'll be three quarters on the third day and then you're fully transitioned by the fourth day and i would say that would be a good one for most puppies but also most owners okay because i can guarantee if this is your first puppy and you're you're you 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 you're going on to you're, you're taking the raw journey then i can absolutely guarantee you will be apprehensive okay um i can't remember the days when i was appreh apprehensive about raw food but i do speak to a lot of people and 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 when we're doing conferences and and, and speaking to large groups then universally when i say who was anxious when they first started on raw then all the hands go up so you, there's there's you will you will be anxious but you're you're not alone and there's a lot of support out there okay from uh, raw feeding vets from uh your friends if they're feeding raw the raw feeding veterinary society there's lots of lots of support so immediate if you think that's going to be that's going to be okay and it probably will with most four day method if you just want to transition your thinking and and transition be gently gradually and then the extended method over there with the calendar is you just you, you do the the four day method but you maybe do it over seven days or 14 days and that's okay as well okay the fact that you're going on to raw at all is a is a great thing if you choose not to go on to raw but you use fresh there are other companies there's um there's a button up box and there's um a different dog and they offer really nice lightly cooked uh products and if you choose to go for for uh, wet food or kibbled food and you've discussed the pros and cons of those things versus the pros and cons of fresh or raw well that's fine good for you okay you um you're in charge and if you've made a, a uh an informed decision then that's absolutely great and go for it so those are transitions um just a little mention Ooh. oh i had a really lovely photo there uh about a, a poo puppy poo okay should have come up there i don't know why it hasn't P puppy poo should look a bit like a cigar okay and i had a lovely photo of uh, a mouse poo after she'd been with us for about four or five days she she was producing these lovely poos and so i thought this is a great opportunity so i actually got up close with my phone in order to take a photo and um, so i've got this picture if you can imagine just a, a lovely little um, cheroot about four inches long and about as wide as my little finger and mm, solid easy to pick up that's it that's really how the puppy should be pooing if the pooey if the puppy is producing uh really uh wet mucky poos then either the food doesn't suit the puppy or gee, you you may be in a situation where the puppy could have giardia and if you there's any worry of say uh, getting giardia then 
uh, I'd have a chat with the vet. Uh, it's relatively easy to treat. Okay, so the second uh, the second issue is, is is worms. Okay, so food because the first thing you've got to do is feed the puppy. Yeah, just keep to get the ball rolling, keep the peace, keep puppy happy, uh, and what have you. Second thing uh, that you can begin thinking about is is worming. Okay, so what are my options for worming? And this is important. Um, it's important because in the old days, all puppies had worms and all puppies needed thorough worming over an extended period. Nowadays, I've been in veterinary medicine for 30, 30 years this year, and I think puppies are a lot cleaner now than they were when I first started. I think the, the breeders are more rigorous. They will often uh, worm the bitch uh, when she's in when she's pregnant. Uh, they will often um, use liquid um, formulations for the pups at kind of three, five and eight weeks. So the chances are the pup is worm free when it, when the, the modern pup comes to you. And so I think nowadays you've got options, whereas in the old days, less so. So what are those options? The first one is that you talk to your vet and you get a pharmaceutical for your uh, for your pup. OK, this is a, a licensed product um, from the vet. And that's a that's a totally OK option. The other thing, it, the other way to use a pharmaceutical, which is a drug, posh way of saying a drug, is that you go along to your your, your local pet store, the local raw store, and you talk to them about um, what are your your drug pharmaceutical options. However, if most pups, and I think most pups are worm free, then I think doing an egg count. So what you do is you take three days worth of just a little sample of poo on day one, day two, day three, and you send them off to uh, one of the worm counting companies. I use a company called wormcount.com, but there's another company called Westgate, and there's another one called FEC Lab, F E C, Fecal Egg Count Lab, FEC Lab. And um, you send the samples off to them, and they can tell you whether there's any evidence of worms, whether there's any evidence of lung worm, and whether there's any evidence of giardia. Okay. And um, and that means that you can then, if the puppy is worm free, you can not use any pharmaceutical um, and therefore save that burden on the puppy's gut. OK, if you ain't got worms, you don't need any anything to help you with your gut. So that's I think, you know, pharmaceuticals have their place. And I'm the first to say that. But pharmaceuticals also, you shouldn't just use them because they're there. I think that one should justify their use. So for me, I think with the modern pup, let's do some worm counting from day one and frequently as when they're young and then every three or, or so months when they're older and only think about using a pharmaceutical if we've got a problem that we can't shift using, say, uh, herbal products. Uh, or such like. OK, so my favoured approach to uh, pups and worms is to use herbal preparations uh, with uh, mouse and with bluebell. We used Vermex and we found it really, really well accepted, very effective. The, the, the these two girls that we have they have never had any worm count whatsoever yeah they've had a zero count forever and we're just using for example we use uh sometimes we use the the little biscuits which you can use on a daily basis and sometimes we will use the the liquid monthly dosing on a on a monthly basis really easy um no shock to the gut and that's a nice way to just prevent anything we do regular worm counts so that we can we, we we know that everything is 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 clear and feels good I th i'm i'm really really comfortable with that it's safe it's effective the two girls have zero uh zero worms we we do the same thing with the cat um 
uh, when well, I talk about this, remember Giardia, worms. Um, if at some point the, 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 the pup gets a little loose, and it persists, then then mm, it's worth either talking to your vet or talking with your worm count people about can we test for Giardia. Obviously, if the pup is really sick, then you're definitely just going straight to the vet. But if you just the dog is just a little bit squitty, then you can talk to your uh, worm count supplier about can we test for Giardia. Uh, and if it's positive, then you I you would talk to the vet. Um, um, actually. Here's my pup, my puppy poo <laughs> picture. I must have changed it over. So this is this is how uh, the uh, uh, mouse's poo looked after about five days after she came to us. Uh, in fact, from day one, it looked like this. There's a there's a cut two penny piece there just to give you some scale. It's pretty small, but she was the size of a you know skinny jack russell at this a skinny mini jack russell at this stage she was really pretty tiny uh she still is actually and she's fully grown but um that's what we're looking for if we're getting persistent loose stool you've either got to look at the the the, the proteins that you're feeding or you've got to just do a test for giardia or get to the vets to get them to do a test for giardia it's easy stuff the key thing is if you've got a healthy puppy who's bouncing around then you've you've got options of what you whether you go to the vet or not with whatever the problem is if there's the slightest hint that the puppy is becoming dull or apathetic or in pain or there's some significant disease problem going on or there might be we're in vet territory so i'd nip along to the vets well done um, and then the, the finally, it's the thorny issue of vaccines. Now, I could give you three hours on, on vaccines. And um, if you'd like to discuss them with me or any of the holistic vets, then, then please contact a, a holistic vet near you so that you can get the pros and cons of vaccine and the pros and cons of minimizing vaccine. OK, that's pretty much the, the, the thing to do informed consent is what we need okay um you can do some homework uh, uh, at home by looking at the vaccination guidelines for new puppy owners you are a new puppy owner or if you're not you will be if puppy is on the way and this will give you um some of the parameters within which you can work i've taken some of uh, quotes from uh, this paper and the first one is they recommend we should aim to vaccinate every animal with core vaccines. OK, and I think there's there is wisdom in that. I didn't vaccinate my kids, but I think that the environment of a puppy is a lot more grubby with with with, with pathogens, parvo in particular, than for a a, a, a child an english child growing up uh in, in 2022 so um i did vaccinate my two uh, bitches um they had a single parvo vaccine each at about 16 weeks or so um uh, possibly later we should aim to vaccinate them every t uh, with core vaccines. OK, the core vaccine are distemper, hepatitis and parvo. OK, and of those, I chose to just vaccinate for the parvo because I think that, that is much more common than the other two. Talk to your vet about the pros and cons of vaccination, the pros and cons of other options. Um, they recommend within the WSAVA, World Small Animal Veterinary Association guidelines, they recommend that uh, we should uh, only give non-core vaccines to those animals who need it. The non-core vaccines are arguably leptospirosis and kennel cough. OK, if your if your kennel de um, demands that you've got to use kennel cough, well, then you've got to use kennel cough. Uh, if your kennel demands that you've got to vaccinate for, for distemper, hepatitis and parvo and lepto, mm. You probably have to. However, there may be uh, you may have the ability to have some conversation there. 
They do, however, wonderfully say vaccines should not be given needlessly. I think in the old days, we would give all the vaccines every year and off we go. But then we challenged that um, and in the early noughties, kind of 2005 or so, there was a rising tide of opinion where we challenged that to say uh, we should we should use vaccines minimally, get maximum effect with minimal uh, frequency of dosing. Um, as regards distemper, hepatitis and parvo vaccines, they recommend that we give the last vaccine, depending on whether you give a single vaccine like I did for my two, and I recommend for my clients, if you give one, you should give it a, 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 on or after 14 to 16 weeks, okay? Um, if, you're, if you're giving two vaccines, then it's ideal if the second vaccine is between 14 and 16 weeks. And if you're giving three vaccines, say at eight weeks, 12 weeks and uh, 16 weeks, then you've got that overlap. And the reason that we do that is that pups when they're born, are they, they have antibodies from mum uh, in the blood and from uh, colostrum and from milk, which which protects them against infectious diseases for the first nine, 12, 16 weeks, depending on the individual, depending on how uh, productive mum is with the antibodies. And so um, they m there are these antibodies floating around in the blood so if you vaccinate the puppy too early the antibodies latch onto the vaccine and the vaccine has nil effect within the body okay um so the idea is if we can give uh, the last of either one two or three uh, uh after 14 to 16 weeks then you have and this is a really key thing to recognize you have a 98 percent chance of that vaccine uh hitting the system so so 49 out of 50 pups will will grasp effectively that vaccine but what's really striking is that if you give it outside like after the maternal immunity has has, has gone within the pup it is possible that that vaccine can last for life now, many people, when I say that, are really surprised. Um, but actually, it's not that surprising because most of us humans were vaccinated as kids. And then we've never had any vaccines since for childhood or, you know, for, for cholera and for, um, um, you know, um, diphtheria and things like that. Yeah, the childhood diseases, you get vaccinated as a kid and then that's it. And so it comes as a surprise when actually... There's a lot of work suggesting exactly the same thing happens with with puppies. If you give the, the vaccine at the right time after the maternal immunity is gone, it can last for up to the lifetime of that dog, which is amazing. How do you tell whether the, whether your dog has antibodies in their system? The answer is you can do a, uh, a teeter test and um, the teeter test uh, can be done every year or every two years or every three years and the reason that we choose every three years is that the, um, the world small animal Vet veterinary association say that after the first booster if you choose to do a first booster about a year after the the, the puppy shots then after that the most frequent that you should do the distemper, hepatitis and parvo vaccines should be every three years. And that means that if you're doing a, an antibody test, the TETA test, as they call it, then you can, if the antibodies on year one are good, you can, you can then delay the same um, antibody test until three years later. Okay. Which is, which is, again, it's, it's uh, some people are quite, um, shocked at that but remember wsava do say that the vaccine can last for the lifetime so the selection of a three-year interval between the dhp vaccines is the minimum your pup your dog as they will be very soon 
could go four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years or more without needing a booster vaccination. OK, talk to your vet or talk to a holistic vet uh, or a homeopathic vet for uh, for more detail on these things. I'm actually going to give you some references at the end and there's some details in there as well. OK, whatever you do, I think an annual health check is a good idea because the vet is going to spot things that you don't spot um, and it's an opportunity to um, just discuss, you know, what's the latest? Um, how does the dog look? Are they thin? Are they fat? Are they okay? How's their teeth? Um, or any little niggles that may have come along. So you could say, I would say that I would recommend an annual health check because I'm a vet, but I do think it's a good idea. You know, you get your teeth checked every year or so. So why wouldn't you get the dog checked every year or so? I think that's a very good idea. OK, so that's a whistle stop tour. I hope to, that that's just given you some some pointers on these three uh, elements, which I think are some of the key questions that you need to address as a new puppy owner. If you look into those before puppy arrives, even better. But uh, reality will dawn when puppy is is there rolling around on the kitchen floor and you think right crumbs <laughs> where do we go from here so um hopefully that's been useful for you a couple of um couple of books to recommend i'll come back into the discussion now and i'll show you but these are the two the first is by lisa hansen friend of mine lisa hansen this book caused a an absolute um uh, sensation in Denmark where it was initially written Lisa's uh, Danish uh, took um, uh, Denmark by storm uh, because it was it was challenging orthodoxy in a very logical way uh, but uh, we've now got a translation over here and it's a really great book so that's Lisa Hansen uh, complete book of of cat and dog health so it will do you for the life of the dog and if you've got cats well you get that you get some uh, information about them as well another wonderful book about mm, the whole dog thing uh, but also talking about puppies some really practical advice this is a really lovely book by uh, um, a retired vet now dr david cuff um, um, again a wonderful member of the raw feeding veterinary society and he's just put down thoughts of you know he's been a vet in london for 35 years or something so he's kind of seen it all done it all and lots of very handy tips so those are great books i'll show you them now in the flesh when i uh, when i come back whoop there we go so let me let me hide that and then i'll ping up for you there okay so just to just to say there's the book there's david's book wrong fingers okay really worth you know if, um for the dog lover in your life then uh that's a great book christmas is coming uh and if you order it you'll probably get it royal mail is abysmal at the moment as you know but um couriers are, are, are taking out the slack and they're doing really really well um this is lisa hansen's the complete book of cat of of cat and dog health and it's you know where, where david is is just kind of to the point and just about dogs uh lisa is you know really goes into some depth she talks about uh you know many things vaccination food behavior uh lots of aspects there it's quite a chunky tone but she writes really, really well it's a very matter of fact so wonderful stuff there as usual i'm way over time I talk too much i do apologize um just i'm just going to look to see whether there's any uh any any uh, burning questions uh jenny meredith says let's let's grab you there jenny um jenny great to see you um just welcomed our 10 week old puppy home so a real interesting life for us fantastic good for you well this is great get into the raw uh there's some wonderful uh raw feeders like jane there 
um dave fletcher is here uh, dave is um part of my um essex family and he runs wonderful uh, embark on raw over there in in essex and uh, worth talking to those guys if you're in that neck of the woods nice to see you dave um and we've got vic benji's here best thing we ever did was go fully raw from day one wonderful and i didn't even have to pay vic benji to say that on this show vic that's great well done you really 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 wonderful work uh this is uh melissa coming in from the states melissa you're so welcome um she says i do feed raw uh, breeder here in the us uh of east ddr working line gsds marvelous look at this can you see the gsds there in the in the picture so wonderful great work melissa really really great to have you here um diana costria welcome again uh what is she i hope somebody's going to ask a question could, oh here we go could you recommend any raw food brands in the uk and ireland please um uh, yeah diana absolutely could i'm not going to go online do it online because that's kind of favoritism but if you email me i'm happy to 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 give you a range of of people to talk to there's some really nice people uh to talk to in the uk margie or maybe margie i do know a margie or two i'm feeding four weeks raw then four weeks butternut box my dogs love both is this okay it is okay and i would imagine they will come to no harm if it were me i would personally stick to raw my two um bluebell and um mouse they are they're both on raw um and i think if you want a bit of science my feeling is that if you cook food you are actually producing a slightly different uh microbiome to if you feeding if you're feeding a raw and therefore there may just be a kind of an oscillation of the microbiome within the pup within the dogs if you're oscillating between the two so i would suggest you're doing great but i'd be inclined to just go raw find a really nice raw company and and, and stick with stick with them but remember variety is the key with with raw okay um um jane says good evening jane nice to see you um she's saying worm count this is wormcount.com they're the people we use there are others that, that you can use um um and okay i'm going to finish with alex she says uh wish more info about vaccines for our pets was available to us rather than just being told we need them all yeah i agree alex i agree i think because as vets we are taught that we should provide a informed consent and i think if you if you go to any source of knowledge you and you only get one story you, if you only get one story that's not the whole the whole picture so for me i i spend when, when when people ring me i will spend 30 minutes going through the pros and the cons of so the pros and cons of vaccines the pros and cons of no sods the pros and cons of doing nothing the pros and cons of minimal vaccination like my two who just got a single parvo shot a little bit later when they were a little bit bigger these are the options and and um we can discuss the pros and cons of those so it it, it is you know that the, the information is out there alex uh have a read of the world small animal veterinary association those are good but also lisa lisa and david cuff will give you some nice background on 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 these david is, is more pro vaccine okay so i'm not partisan here you know uh you've got to you've got to um be informed make your choices and then off you go okay guys that's that's us we're over time but i hope uh that was useful for you um i'm gonna wish you a very very i'm gonna just take alex off there i'm gonna 
wish you a very, very happy Christmas and New Year. Uh, we are going to be continuing with the with the gut doctor in the new year because we get lots of very, very positive feedback. So watch this space. If you need any information on, on herbs, then talk to uh, the people at Vermex. Um, they're a very helpful bunch and they will be able to help you. And they can, if you keep an eye on the website, they will uh, give you information as to when we're going to be doing uh me doing my presentations here but we're also going to be doing some more interviews and some more inter interaction with you guys uh so that's what we're up to lots of interesting um stuff in 2023 mm, and um there you go i'm gonna say good night i'm gonna say happy christmas i'm gonna say a very very happy new year and i hope you have a uh and happy holidays and indeed the same for the new year all the very best. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.